Second Corinthians chapter 10. I believe God wants to speak to somebody this morning. Please, I want you to open your heart and we'll come to church. We're in church to receive direction, to receive counsel. Some battles that we face, sometimes we employ some tools in the wrong way. So when you come to church at times, you know, you've been guided on how to fight. You know, we all believe that the Christian way is a fight. That's why Apostle Paul says that I have fight a good fight. Amen. It's a fight. Yes, amen. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. No, chapter 4 verse 7. I fight, I fought a good fight. Before we get there, let us go to 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For though we are of the world, but we do not take the tools that the world provide to war. So for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Everyone is dealing with one stronghold or the other. Amen. Your stronghold might not even be demons. But it could be demons, it could be demonic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But certainly there are strongholds Amen. that tend to resist us. And this has nothing to do with maybe you are anointed or not. I don't think anybody can be more anointed than Daniel. When the prince of Pasha went to withhold his blessing, he delayed his blessing. So there are strongholds. Yes, amen. So the Bible is saying that the weapons of our warfare, they are not what they are not carnal. Mm -hmm. They are not worldly things. Amen. That's why it says for say we do not war after the flesh. So when you are fighting a battle, though the battle might have physical manifestation, the root of it is so spiritual. Deeply rooted in spiritual issues. So casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Amen. And bringing into captivity every thought to, be, to the obedience of Christ. Amen. So you walk in the flesh. Sometimes you live in the flesh like because you live in the world. But the race that you are running, the war that you are fighting, it's not fight. You are not fighting in, in line with worldly policies. I, don't, I just want to talk about believers' weapons this morning. Believers' weapons. I think I talked about it yesterday in New Jersey. Believers' weapons. Weapons are instruments of warfare. They are instruments that we engage when we go to war. And the kind of weapon I'm talking about this morning, they are weapons that you cannot manufacture in a lab, in a scientific lab. No. Let's go to the story of David, our test. Let's learn some lessons from David this morning before we move on. I'll try to be fast. God helps me. Philip 4 Samuel chapter 17. Now we all know that story, so I don't need to go all through all the tests. I'll just be bringing some things out. Yes. We all know the story. A giant, if you read Paul Samuel chapter 17, verse 4, it said, And there went out a champion out of the camp of Philistines named Goliath of God, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an element of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. 
and he had grips of brass upon his legs and a tired of brass between his shoulders. Goliath was a strong man, a stronghold, a giant. He was a man that when the armies of Israel, when they saw him, they fled. When they saw him, they disappeared. They drew back. Fear caught them. They were so afraid. There are certain situations in our lives that when the situation comes, we become so afraid. We become terrified. So, the Bible, you know, began to list, you know, how strong Goliath is. And in verse 8, the Bible says, And he stood and cried out unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servant to Saul? Now choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. You see, this man already knew that these guys will be taken up by phobia. You know they were, they were just many for nothing. And he put it to them. He was making a deal with them. That's why it is dangerous to bargain with enemy. That's why we say to demons, we don't know. There's no room for bargain because when you bargain, they set the rules, they set the pace. So you don't give the enemy the, the room to bargain. I mean, no. So Goliath was the one, you know, he was the one that was taking the he was the one taking the shots. Look at this man. Verse 9. And he he be able to fight with me and to kill me. Then will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall he be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Now, the Philistine was defying the army of the God of Israel. So, so many times you see challenges. You see issues of life that will come to confront us. Not because of who we are in a physical realm. But because you carry God. Because you choose to serve God. Because you choose to separate yourself. Then they will arise. Not for you. It is the God in you that they want to fight against. So you see how he bragged. He said, I defy the armies of Israel. Now we jump the story. Now David heard. After those guys, the, the, those uh, civilian guys in army clothes. Those are civilian guys in army uniform. They are, they are mere civilians. They just carry spear on them. <laughs> so David heard. Because his father sent him to take food to the brother that were in the war front. Eliab and others. Now, when David heard about what the Philistines had said, David was provoked. Just like Sister Claire was provoked in the bus this morning. Amen. He was provoked. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That is the same attitude that we should have Amen. when giants try to block our ways. Yes. Amen. Sometimes you have to stand up and say, Who are that old mountain before me? Amen. I command you to come down now. Sometimes you need to stand on your feet and declare the mountain to crumble. Yes, amen. Because if you entertain the mountain, the more you entertain, it becomes bigger. Amen. Then the more you do that, you lose your faith. Amen. Let's jump forward and um, let's go to verse 22, where we started our test. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And then Goliath stick, you know, issued the same word, the same bragging, the bragging guy that will soon be dead. Now, when David heard about all the tanks that um, Goliath has placed down, 
David consulted with the people and with the king. What shall be done to the man? You see, for every race, there is a reward. Because David understood the reward that further prepared him to go and fight. So as Christians, when you see circumstances, look at the reward. Because when you win, you win for God. Because when you win, God wins. Apostle Paul said, there is a crown of glory that has been, you know, assigned for me. And he said, it's not only for me, but those that have heed to my, you know, saying, and I've made use of them. So David, first of all, understood. And that is why the Bible says that we should get, in order to get, get what? Understanding. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. He understood there is a reward attached to the fight. So he, he understood. It's like being a Christian not knowing that heaven is your reward. You don't be fighting like a fool. You have to understand what is at stake. The crown of glory is at stake. So when the enemy comes, it is the crown of glory that is at stake. Let's go further. Now this is where he asked. Verse 27, and the people answered him after this man saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Then go to verse 28. The brother. Now, they thought David came to observe. They thought David came to just do mere observation on the feet. Some people will think you are just going to try to observe in your father's house. They will think you carry no power. They wouldn't understand what is deposited inside of you. They would think you just go out to observe. David went to the field to give them food, of course. But his story has changed from just mere observanship. He was ready for war. So when you confront issues, the enemy might be thinking, or people around you might be thinking, no, you're just going to observe and go back. You don't have any power. Tell your neighbor it is not by power. It is not by might. It is by the Spirit of the Lord. So it is not by power. It is not by might. So they rebuked David. They were like, I know thy pride, thy naughtiness, thy heart. But thou art come that thou might see the battle. They underestimated David. They never knew this guy has killed much more than, much more than they have killed. The brothers have not killed lion. They have not been to the pit. They have not killed bear. David has killed lion. They have killed bear at that time. They never knew. And the Bible didn't tell us that he used gun or arrow to shoot the lion. No. Hand. Bear hand. Now David went to Saul. Let's go to verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. He was so sure of himself. We're talking about weapons this morning. Believers' weapons. And so said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his feet. Look at an anointed king talking like somebody who is not anointed. Somebody that was anointed, that ought to see beyond his nose. He couldn't see what God so, in David. And I was telling David, no, you are not a man of war. Goliath has been a man of war. You know? And David replied, you see the power of testimony. Somebody say the power of testimony. The power of testimony. Remember very well, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, said we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the words of our testimony. We will not love our life to string it from what? From death. Now, David was giving his testimony here. Said, uh, verse 34. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant keepeth his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and I smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. 
Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And these uncircumcised Philistines shall be as one of them. Amen. See, he had defied the armies of the living God. For the very first time, we see a man that had an understanding of the fights. That this is not about the physical armies that you are seeing. It's about the armies of the living God. It's about you in the spirit. We already established that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? Yes. So the, the Bible says, David now said, 37, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the bear, and he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Amen. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord will be with thee. Amen. We see the power of testimony coming to play. So one of the weapons that you need in fighting for yourself, in running the race, is sharing the testimonies that God has given to you. Amen. Even when you get to a stage, when you get to a church that it seems in, impossible to go forward, tell yourself and tell the situation, God has saved me in the past. He will still save me today. Amen. You see, every time I ask God, I'm believing God for something, I say, God, you are the one that did this. You did it easily for me. You did it at this junction. You did it at this junction. I know you would do this. And I'm okay. I'm satisfied. The power of testimony. One of the weapons. If you want to put it down, testimony is one of the weapons that you need to use to fight. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about believers' weapons. Now David gave that testimony and Saul, you know, consented. No, go ahead. He consented. He said, go ahead. God will be with you. Now, Saul puts on all the weapons of, in their armory, in their arsenal, upon David. And when he put it upon him, David couldn't go with those things because he has not proved them. There's something we call dangers of untested weapons. Do not go to war with what you have not proved. David has seen the power of God moving in him without using spear. God using arrow. Why do you want to use arrows and spears and sword and whatever it is that Saul is bringing up on you? You know, like I said yesterday, some people will go to church. They have gone to church to pray to God because the answer is not yet there. They are seeking psychic. They are still doing some alternative sources of solutions. Untested weapons. Sometimes God will tell you the best way to worship Him that you will not sleep off. But because you are you, you want to you like to lie down when you are praying, so that when you are praying, you just doze up. <laughs> Meanwhile, God has shown to you the best position to be for you to pray effectively. Amen. Avoid using untested weapons. Amen. So David took off those weapons that are, were meaningless to him. And now, when Goliath saw David, he bragged again. Because to Goliath, he saw a very handsome guy, Rudy. Very handsome. So your enemy might be seen just a beautiful, you know, helpless, powerless brother or sister. But in you lies the seed and the power of the living God. Amen. That as young as you look, as small as it is, the power of God that dwells in you is greater than anything that you could think or imagine. Amen. That when you declare a thing, it shall come to pass. Amen. So it is not by sight. The enemy can underestimate you. It doesn't matter. The enemy can bring you down. It does not matter. The enemy can tell you you will never get there. It doesn't matter what the enemy is saying. The Bible says, Who is he that can speak and bring it to pass? If God has not commanded it to be so. So if God has not said it, if the enemy likes, let him underestimate you. So Goliath underestimated Joseph and David. Because Goliath was seen a small, handsome, rudy guy. God saw a warrior. 
So when the enemy thinks that he sees you as a tiny thing, God is saying, that is the apple of my eyes. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Touch not my anointed. Amen. And to my prophet, no harm. Amen. So when God puts his anointing upon you, no demon can touch you. Amen. When they touch you, they will fail. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go for them. Then the, the, the Christian brag, he brag, he brag. Let's go to verse 45. I don't care about him. I care about the one that got the victory. Amen. Then, verse 45. Then said David to the Christian, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a sheet. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Every power divine you. Amen. Every agent of darkness divine you. Amen. The name of the God of Israel yes. shall destroy them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. No. See so what David used there. Can you put Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10? See so what David used there. The name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Say, I come unto you yes. in the name of the Lord of hosts, yes. the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. So when circumstances arise, yes. they are trying to defy the God that is in you. Amen. The name of Jesus will answer for you Amen. in the days of trouble. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, Wherefore God has also had highly exalted him yes. and given him a name which is above every other name. Amen. The name of Jesus, verse 10. Verse 10 says that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Amen. Of the things in heaven, of the things in that, of the things under the earth. Amen. And every tongue should do what should confess. That Jesus is Lord. Amen. When you apply the name of Jesus and you are carrying the anointing, mountains will disappear. Amen. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous rush their in and their word. They are saved. Amen. So the name of God saves. Yes, amen. So we could see the weapons that David employed here. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. And it says in verse 46, This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hands, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give thy carcass of the host of the, of the host of Philistine this day unto the powers of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. David fought with understanding. He was not fighting a foolish fighting. He was not engaging in carnal warfare. He understood that he was fighting for God. Every time you are fighting, any fight that you fight that is outside of God is carnal. Yes, right. amen. Right. Yes, amen. He fight because he wanted to show Philistine, the Philistine, that there is a God in Israel. Amen. Now let's just rush down to you know the last part that we read. Fifty-four says, and David took the head of the Philistine and brought it into the Jerusalem. He put it in someone in his tent. Where I'm going to is after he shot the snake. I, I told people in New Jersey yesterday that it was, to me, it didn't make sense that David went to take only five smooth stones. Yes. Just smooth stones. Yes. We're talking about a giant. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just a giant. And he went to take five smooth stones. Sometimes we'll be expecting God to use us in a particular way. Yes. We'll be expecting God to come in a way that is so like an earthquake issue. But no, God is not going to come like you, you, on your own terms. His ways are not our ways. Amen. No. The Bible says he used the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise. I'm very sure that the armies of Israel will be looking at what's wrong with this guy? He has nothing with him, just his shepherd back. But in that shepherd back, oh my goodness. Oh my God. Oh my God. And God gave David victory because David did 
did not go in his own understanding. Amen. David didn't go in his own understanding. He went with the backing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He went with the backing of the Holy Spirit. So there is a war going on between light and darkness. The war between flesh and the spirit. And for you to be able to fight this warfare, you need to employ the right weapons. Yes. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Let's leave David a little bit and go to the New Testament. So that we give the um, New Testament back to what we're talking about. We've opened the um, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse you know, 3 to 5 already. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10. Said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong. Apostle Paul was writing to the you know Ephesians. And people in the Ephesians said, Be strong. Be strong. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. If you read in Nehemiah chapter 8, the last part of verse 10. Say the joy of the Lord is your strength. Neymar hates them. So he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He now says, he now begins to list the weapon. I mean, you have to understand that joy is one of the weapons. You cannot be a Christian that gives praises to God, that is thankful if you do not have the joy of the Holy Ghost. You know, Pastor, you will see joy of the Lord. Oh, Lord is my strength. <laughs> The joy of the Lord is our strength. It does not matter what we are going through. Amen. That's why the Bible says we should be anxious for what? For nothing. For nothing. Yes. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is a shield. In fact, it gives you, it boosts your faith when you are joyful. You'll be able to stand and declare clearly the word of the Lord when you are joyful. So one of the weapons joyful be joyful be joy of the lord so the bible says we should put on the whole armor of god that we may be able to withstand against the wise of the devil the devil is going all about it's always you know bringing issues you know the devil is is is, is never relenting that's why the Bible says, be sober, be what for? For your adversaries, the enemy, the, 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 the enemy, he will make a bow like a lion, seeking him to devour. The enemy is always roaming about. Mm -hmm. I was in a program where a, a woman of God from, uh, I think, Texas or so, the deliverance minister, and she was ministering and she was talking about a demon spoke and the demon said she's a freelancer. I've never heard that before in my life. I've heard ancestral demons and stuff, but this one, this one does go about looking for a, a very suitable host. So that one was not something that has to do with maybe from the line of the bloodline, no. This said, I'm a freelancer. I mean, for the very first time, I was, I was, I mean, I was shocked. Oh, there are demons that are freelancers. So the enemy roamed about. Seeking whom to devour. So the Bible says we should put on the old armor. Now the Bible says it again, and it says, For we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Like we always say, the fight is not between you and your brother. It's not between you and your no. It's a spiritual fight. It's a spiritual war. So we need to take on the armor of God. And what are those armors that was atomized here? I will rush through them. The Bible talks about we should take on the, the, the truth, the bed of truth. And we know that Jesus is what the Bible is referring to there. Jesus is the only truth. He's the only truth. John chapter 14 verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the 
weigh the truth and the lie. So before you could fight and fight successfully as a Christian, you must know the truth. Amen. You must know Jesus. Amen. The truth that you know is the truth that you set we set you free. They said that we know the truth and the truth will make you free. And then the Bible talks about best rate of righteousness. We can read that. I think we quote that in this church very well. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to every people. Amen. If we want to really fight, one of the basic weapons we must establish is righteousness. Amen. The Bible says the priests of this world they came unto Jesus to examine him. Yes. But they found nothing in him. Amen. If you allow the freelancer spirit to come and check you out, check you up, and you are so available. Mm. That could be dangerous to your salvation. You know, help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Another thing we have to do is we have to witness, like um, Sister John, we always you know mention. We have to witness for Christ. But the Bible says, "This shines shall follow them that do all." I believe. believe. It is in going that the change comes. Yes. When you go out, God empowers. Amen. Amen. Then we have to take up the sheet of faith. Yes. That was exactly what David did. He believed that Goliath was nothing compared to lion and bear. He took up the sheet of faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Without faith, you cannot fight the enemy. In fact, without faith, you cannot receive from God. Let us not fighting the enemy. Then the element of salvation. You can't beat that too much. Seek him first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. The gateway to using these weapons is first of all to be saved. If you are not saved, your weapons will not work. Amen. Salvation is the key. Tell somebody beside you, salvation is the key. Salvation is the key. If you have not got Jesus, Jesus. Get, Jesus now. get Jesus now in Jesus mighty name Amen. then the Bible talks about the sword of the spirit you see one reason why many of us are baby Christians is because we have run away from the world mm -hmm. we forget so soon that it is through the world that we were formed that we were created John chapter 1 it is through the world in fact, if you see a Christian that does not have answer to problems around him, it's because he's lacking in the word of God. Amen. 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 This is the word of life, the dictionary of our life, yes. the constitution. Yes. Amen. The proclamation. Yes. Amen. Because this is God in written form. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. Yes. It is with this word that we were all created. Yes. Amen. The word of God is a double, it's like a double-edged sword. Amen. That's a powerful instrument. Yes, In the book of Luke chapter 4, we saw how Jesus defeated the devil by mere speaking the word. Yes, amen. It, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. Amen. Trust me, there are situations in our life that we need to speak the word to. Oh, the devil thinks that you are down. You, you, oh, you say, no, rejoice not over me, my enemy. Yes, amen. Though I fall, amen. I shall rise yet again. Amen. You declare the word of the Lord. Yes, amen. The devil brings sickness and you say, you know what, no? Whose report do you want to believe? Yes. I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Yes, yes. amen. It seems you don't have money and you begin to think, so they say, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I shall not want. Amen. Declare the word of the Lord. Amen. Those are our weapons. Yes, amen. So many of us, we know these weapons, but we don't use them. 
a weapon you don't use become blunt. Yes, amen. I remember a theory we used in biology then, I think Jim Lamarck's theory, I can't remember. He said, he said they frequently use organs because modified. He said the organs that you don't use, they become um, yes. redundant. Yes. Yes. You have your weapons, you have to sharpen your weapons, you have to use them regularly. Yes. Believers' weapons. Yes, amen. And the Bible talks about we pray in all manners of prayers. Yes. Prayer is the key. Amen. We saw Jesus Christ as highly anointed as he was. He, was, he will separate himself. Yes. And he will go and yes. pray. Yes. Amen. He will separate himself somewhere and go and seek the face of the Father. Amen. As a man that was born, like he is God himself. Yes. And he still had the time to fellowship with God. Yes, amen. That's why he prayed, he said, uh, that's why he took his Bible and said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Right. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Amen. We ought to be praying and not to faint. Yeah. When situation comes, that's not the time to faint. That's not the time to fret. That's not the time to begin to be afraid. That's not the time to begin to issue causes. It's the time to begin to pray. Amen. Atomize your weapons. Categorize them and use them. Prayer and fasting. Yes, amen. Live a life of praises and worship. Amen. That was what Jehoshaphat did. When he got to the world of Jericho, yes. God told them not to do anything. Yes. Just shout yes. around. Shout. Yes. Praises. Yes. So sometimes the weapons that we need might just be praises and worship. Amen. Amen. When you praise and worship God, His presence comes down. Yeah. I got on Sunday, I was praising God, and I was just, I've not started to pray. Yeah. I was just worshiping God. Yeah. And the way wind came and began to turn me, I couldn't control it. I was scared. Hallelujah. <laughs> After the experience, I, yeah. I said it just to my wife. I said, Woman, <laughs> God wrote me. Yes. Not, I've not seen a sleeper that is much more than that. I saw real wind. Jesus. I asked for it, and I saw real wind. That was. Maybe two weeks ago. Jesus. For three days. I didn't get myself. Jesus. Hallelujah. When you Hallelujah. taste the power of God, yes. God is so real, my Amen. brethren. Amen. God is real. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. He is yeah. a real God. A very important tool again is the blood of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. The one that we normally use in this place. The blood of Jesus. Yes. I'm closing soon. The blood of Jesus. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. I've quoted it before. Yes. Chapter 12. Verse 11. The very common phrase in this church. Revelation 12, 11. It says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. They overcame him by the blood. We need the story of the blood already. This is not in the blood of bulls and rams or sheep or whatever. God told the children of Israel in Goshen, put the blood by the doorpost. Amen. And the angel of death will do what pass over. Amen. Amen. And you could see God displayed his power. There was life and light in Goshen while Egypt was in trouble. You can imagine. Egypt was in turmoil, in trouble. Yes. And because of the blood, there was light in Goshen. There will be life and light in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The last one I will talk about before I conclude is the art of giving thanks. The art of giving thanks is a powerful weapon. Thanksgiving. Even when Jesus Christ got to Lazarus, before he did anything at all, he thanked God. He said, Father, I thank you because you heard me when I called you. He was not looking at the situation at that moment. He gave thanks to God before he commanded. In the book of Luke chapter 17, we saw how 10 lepers were healed. 10 lepers were healed. Yes, amen. 10 lepers were healed. Only one came back. Yes, he said, give to give thanks. Yes. Only one came back. And the one that came to give thanks was made whole. If you want God to make you whole, you must have the attitude of giving thanks to God. Amen. Amen. Stop looking at your situation. Yes, and give Stop looking at Goliath. Giants do die, yes. they say. Yes. And when they fall, they fall big. Amen. 
but you must use the right weapon. Yes. You must not trust in human wisdom. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Yes. Lean not on your own understanding. Yes. In all your ways. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. We must trust God. Yes. And when we trust God, we use the right weapon. The weapons of our weapons, they are not carnal. Church, let's, be, let's stop being carnal. Yes, it's time to plug into the spirit. Amen. It's time to engage in spiritual warfare. Amen. Through the weapons that God has given to us. Amen. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us be on our feet as we pray. As we pray, let us just pray one or two Amen. prayers to God. Amen. We've learned about how David destroyed that Goliath. Amen. And I just want somebody to go before God. I want somebody to go before God today and 